This is going to be the full tutorial on this Casio G-Shock GPR-B1000 Rangeman. In the description you'll find timestamps so you can find exactly what you need to know very quickly. This is a survival watch as they class it so don't compare it to a Phoenix because this is just like your regular G-Shock. What it does pack is that GPS side. Maybe not the fastest tool in the shed, but hey, this is solar powered and it runs GPS and it runs it for a very long time. Now I've done many videos with me traveling from the UK over the waters and down all the way through France into Switzerland, testing the durability of the GPS on this rangeman and I've also done it on the returning journey and this thing has both times or in fact three times I've tested it and not once has it failed me. This isn't going to be a review of this arrangement. This is just going to be exactly what you need to know with regards to actually how to operate this. And this is both for the watch and on the GPS side. This arrangement isn't for everyone because it's basically the size of a hockey puck and it has wobbly buttons and a wobbly crown. And uh, there is a reason for that. And that's all to do with the shock resistance. So if you're finding yours is wobbly this is very very normal indeed also i like to point out that the flickering on the screen is also very normal because the refresh rate is working much like your television set and it's doing it very fast but in certain lights you can actually catch it flickering so basically the whole of the lcd display is refreshing every time there is an adjustment this is all to do with battery saving because this doesn't use a color or anything that's flashy like you see on your smartphones where this is just very basic black and white and it does the job perfectly in all lighting conditions. The battery indicator down the bottom here is showing four cells and let me sort of explain to you what is happening here. So when it's on four cells this means that every function is working and this is including the GPS side. So with the GPS side this requires the battery cell four and three. And once it drops down to the battery levels of one and two, that means the GPS will stop functioning. But you'll still have the ABC functions and all the other functions that needed for this watch, including the Bluetooth. But once you get down to the one bar, then you will start to lose certain features like the Bluetooth and possibly like the barometer and compass. So it'll be more basic being solar powered you can charge it up but there is a wireless charger that comes with the uh, rangeman and on a complete flat battery being that it's on one cell it will take up to five hours to charge but if you just need to top it up then obviously it's going to be a lot quicker on this wireless charger you have some lugs on this side and one on here and on the button side on the rangeman you have two little ports on this side so it's just a matter of lining those two on that side and then on the sensor side just pushing that towards you will clip it into position you could also possibly wear it in this position if you had a battery pack the rangeman comes also with its own power cable and this part connects to the wireless charger while this part goes into your normal five volt plug socket and this can be what you use to charge your phone. On this end of the charging cable, it is flat on this side and when you rotate it, it has these two little lumps. Now these lumps need to be facing towards you for you to plug it in and it goes in like this. And with a final push, you will have a little message pop up saying charging battery. You will also have next to the battery a little lightning bolt just to indicate that this is charging. Before I go any further, I just want to explain that I'm going to be calling this button here A, B, C and D and the crown as the crown so we know where we are and this 
where it's showing the time will always be the home time. I'm just gonna give you a quick tour of what actually is in this watch. Just wanna say that this button here, button A does all your adjustment. Button B is your light. Button C here does all the modes and this button here, D, does receiving and it also has some options. So let's just push button A here and go into the first menu and this is the settings and this is screen one of two. And using the crown here, you can use the scroll wheel to go down and up. So first is display, you have airplane mode, you have alarm, you have home city, daylight saving time, time and date, beep, light and unpairing. And it also has here back. And so using the mode button, just gonna go back to the home screen. Next one is button D, receiving, push that. Then you have Bluetooth. Then scrolling down, you have time with the GPS. Then you have time and position, and it will scroll a little bit like so. Then the next one is phone finder, more scrolling, and then you have history. And then pressing this button down here, button C is your modes, and this is screen one of two. So you have timekeeping, you have connect, compass, altimeter, barometer, sunrise and sunset. You have tide and moon, stopwatch, timer, and world time and then pressing back, goes back to the home screen. Pressing button B will give you the light just for a few seconds like so. There is no option to actually hold with a long press to have the LT, the automatic light that comes on with the tilt of your wrist. This has to be done in the watch, which I will cover. What I'm gonna explain now is how to reset the Bluetooth. Now this is important if you've bought the watch used, but if you bought it new, then you probably don't need to do this. I would just do it anyway. So what you do, you press button A once, and what you need to find is the one called unpairing. Now the crown has a push system as well as scrolling, so we just push that, and it opens up this window here saying unpairing, yes or no, and I would push the crown again and just to unpair that. So the watch is now completely free and ready to connect to your new device. Next, you'll need to connect this to the free app, which is G-Shock Connected. So you just download either from your Apple Store or from your Android Google Shop. Once you have the app installed, you just open it up and you'll have a window like this. So if you're new to the G-Shock Connected, you'll see that there is a list of all the possibilities and uh, for the G-Shock Connected. So anyway, what I would just do very quickly, maybe this is a good idea, open up this one here and it's gonna come up with a screen like this. I will come back to that in a moment. But at the bottom here, it's got view guide. So if you just tap on that, you'll get some information about the buttons and also you get some information about the navigation side. So you can just open this up and read through in your own time, just to really absorb as much detail as you can. Also using this tutorial to help you further. Now, if I go back here, press the cross at the top here, I go back to this window, and in the top right-hand corner, there's a little setting gear. So if you open that up, I can go into a demo mode. So just tap on that. And again, scroll down to the rangeman, open up the rangeman, and you'll have this screen here. And at any time, press unset and it takes you back. But here you can look at the activity side. You can tap on all of these. These are all interactive. So here you can open up and create a new route which I will come back to. It keeps coming up with this pop-up window. Don't worry about that. It's all different when you're in the actual watch itself when it's connected. You've got the world time to play around with and you've got the utility where you can mess around with the alarms and timer. You can tap on the bottom there or you can just scroll through like so. Very, very easy. Then you can just tap on the unset 
and then it takes you back here again. Then using the arrow, we go back and then go back again. And now we're back at the main window. Now to connect the rangeman, so scroll back down on the list, select the rangeman, then you'll have this window here and they'll have a prompt and this is to tell you to push button C here for a few seconds and it will give a few little beeps and you'll have a display like that on the watch then you'll have another prompt to register the watch to the app so press this and then just wait for a few seconds and then on the rangeman it will come up with connected once successful and there it is now complete and then you'll have a little screen like this you can just scroll all the way through here it's just giving you some little um, examples of what's involved in this watch and then just press start and then you have this display here and then to disconnect you can just press any button and it will come back out like so as long as the rangeman is within the Bluetooth range of your connected device, and whether your device is on or not, and this is with regards in standby, this will look for a time sync, and this will perform this four times a day every six hours. Now, if it doesn't get a signal after two days, then it will look for a GPS signal, but this will only happen when you're outside in full sunshine. And this will be using the solar panel to detect whether you are in that sunshine and it does it automatically for you, which is very cool. It doesn't have multi-band six and that's why it uses your Bluetooth on your device and uses the GPS. Just to update you that there is a little bit of a lag in the seconds we're only talking about a nano amount and this is because of the Bluetooth delay to the actual watch. So you may see that the seconds are slightly different on your device so don't panic this is all very normal indeed you can perform a manual time sync at any time as long as you're within range of your connected device so by pressing button D here with a long press gives a little chirp then you have a display like this now it usually takes around about sort of five to ten seconds and then the display will come up with adjusted screen like so and it's come up with London because that's where I am latitude and longitude and obviously the time and the date and then just press in any button just to take you back out or it goes back automatically from home screen pressing button a here i go into this option here which is the adjustment and this is screen one of two so let's go through each one of them and show you what each does so to select this it's just by pressing the crown here and first one of the options in the display setting is screen so press this and you always sort of know where you are because it's come up with setting at the top and it's saying screen you also got one of two pages here also which is really good and i just like to include that the back button is always the mode there it does come up so what do you have here with the screen well basically you can change what you see on the home screen so when it's basic that's time and date then you can have with the time and the navigation map you've got time barometer time sunset sunrise and the last one is time and world time so let me just give you sort of an example let's choose the sunset sunrise press the crown it comes up with setting complete now if I was to go back into the home screen I now have the sunrise and sunset times right at the top there pressing the A button here again go into display and go into the screen pressing the crown and then you can adjust but there is a shortcut I'm going to show you how to do this so this is in the home screen button A again but this time a long press and you have the little shortcut here and it takes you straight there so now I can go straight up to basic press the crown and that is set so when I come back out it's set to the basic so pressing button A again going back into display 
I have the other option. This is 12 and 24 hour. Very easy. Now, if it's in 12 hours, you will have the PM indicator shown. I like to have it on 24, so I'm just gonna stick with that. And then it comes up with setting complete. From display, scrolling down, go into the airplane mode. And there it scrolls past, just to sort of show you that. Pressing the crown opens the options and you only have off and on. And this basically will turn off the Bluetooth and the GPS. Next is the alarm, and this can be adjusted either through the watch or through the app. And uh, I shall show you the app in a moment. So pressing the crown and there I have four alarm possibilities. Now, if I press the crown again, I go into the adjustment side and here I can adjust the hours and the minutes and it's all to do with the scroll wheel. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to set the alarm because I wanna give you a demonstration as well. So let's take that up to 16. You have the shift here. This is using the receiving button. So pressing that and it moves the, moves the cursor over. So I'll just do that again. You can see it goes down to the snooze option and then pressing again to the hours. So you can just keep doing it like so. So if I just take that up to say seven, maybe I'm gonna be quick enough, let's hope so. Then pressing the shift, I'm gonna put it onto the snooze which is like so and then when i'm ready i just press the crown in and that's now set and it comes up like this so if i exit now into the home time and i've made it so this is what it looks like when you're in home screen when it goes off you actually get a little box come up i must say the alarm is is okay it's pretty standard and then you have it like so. And the alarm will go into a snooze, which will sound every sort of five minutes. And I think that's repeated about six times. Back in again by pressing button A, scrolling down to the alarm. So I must say this crown is does have a little bit of lag. I don't know if you can just see that, but... Uh, Anyway, you get used to it. So there's the alarm and I have the option using button D down here, I can turn the alarm on or off. And it does actually come up with on or off. So if I press that, that's to say to put it on. And if I was to press it, going to turn it off. Now, I'm not sure why they've done it this way around. The way I see it, I see that as the alarm being on and that being the alarm off. Maybe you can do a reverse on that Casio next time. Anyway, you have the icons there, and if you select that again, you can shift back through and opt to turn that snooze off or on if you wanted to. So it always turns it on from the adjustment side, so you have to manually turn it off like so. And this goes for all four alarms and each alarm has the possibility of snooze. So let's go and have a look at the app and show you how easy it is to set using that. So you open the app and then you press button C with a long couple of seconds, does a couple of beeps, and then you have G-Shock connected on the watch, then you have this logo here, and then once it's connected, it will come up with connection complete. Then you can either scroll through like so, or you can just tap on the toolbar at the bottom. And we're after utility. Then if I open up alarm, it comes up like so. And you can see that the alarm is set at 16.07. Now, if I press this button here or toggle, it is now going to give me the option. I can either adjust the alarm or I can press send the setting to the watch and uh, you're probably familiar how this works as well. And I must say that if you're setting multiple alarms, this is the way to go. It's much, much quicker this way than actually doing it on the, the actual watch. You can also select whether you want snooze on or off. And once you're happy, you send to the watch and it comes up with done. And also the app will come up with setting complete. OK, 
Connected will appear on the display on the G-Shock with the G-Shock logo and it does a sort of a blinking as well and you also have the little time there. This is just to indicate that it is connected to your device. As mentioned before, you can press any button to disconnect and this time I'm going to use the light button and there it comes out. So let's have a look in the home screen and here you can see that the snooze alarm is set. So if I press button A and go scrolling into the alarm, you can see there it is and I can turn it off here as well. And every time you are connected back to your device, it will update whatever information you have on the watch as well. What if you set all four alarms, it will update all this into the app. Very clever. Moving down from alarm, we have the home city. Pressing the crown enters this. Now I have it on London because it's automatically updated through my iPad. And as my iPad is connected to the Wi-Fi, it's using my location because I've allowed it to. In case you don't have your device and you are a little bit stuck and you need to adjust this, manually here is where it's done say if you landed in Kathmandu and you don't have that phone connection then by selecting it it goes like so and once you do have your connection and your phone is all connected through the sort of network then it will update it automatically from home city scrolling down the next last one on this list is daylight saving times here you can have it on auto, you can actually have it just on standard, or you can actually turn the daylight saving time on permanently. After daylight saving time, scrolling down, it goes into the setting menu or the adjustment menu two of two. First one on this list is time and date, and this is where you get to manually adjust those two. So press in the crown and you get this here. And using the crown, you can adjust by scrolling, or by pressing button D, we'll skip to the minutes, it skips to the year, you have the month, and you have the date, and then pressing again, it just goes back, it just recycles through it. The seconds are set on zero, zero, you can't adjust those, but once you are happy and you've got it all set up, by pressing the crown, that will zero the seconds from then. If I was to go back out, you can see that it started already from that zero, zero, by the time I've come out, then, you know, well, you understand. Moving down from time and date is beep. And this is basically the sound for the buttons. You either have it on or off, nice and easy. Just show you quickly that if you do press the mode button for a few seconds, you do have that little beep. But if you were to go into one of the modes and then press again to return back to the home screen, it doesn't make a tone and I can't understand why it doesn't do like a higher pitch like it does on the regular G-Shocks. Anyway, let's go back in to the beep. So from beep, that was quite easy to cover. Next is the light. And here you have a couple of options. You have the duration, so you can either choose it from three seconds to one and a half seconds. And then from here, you can scroll down and go to the auto light. And this is the only place where you can adjust this. Normally on G-Shocks, it's just a long press on the light button and you get to turn the auto light on and off. For some reason, they didn't put it on this one, but maybe it's all to do with about uh, keeping the battery a little bit more reserved because if that's accidentally pressed for a long time, it turns it on. So maybe it's a feature like that. And the last one is unpairing, which we've covered. So that is button A and all the adjustment and setting complete. So next from the home screen is the receive button. This is also like a function button, which you sort of seen when it does the shift. Anyway, press in this. This gives you your Bluetooth connection. This is basically, if I press the crown now, that will connect to the device I've got next to me. All that's going to do is a time sync with the date, like you've seen there with adjusted. So I just come back out of that 
and then go back in. The next one you have is Time GPS. This is just basically giving you a time update by pressing the crown here and it will come up with a sort of logo like this or exactly like this and with a receiving. So this is not gonna take your location. This is just basically going to update the time and the date. And I find this actually sometimes, this is hit and miss, but it might actually work and not work in my light box. That as you saw, it came up with failed. So basically you go outside or near a window is good enough and just press that and it just gives you that little update. The next one on this list is time and position. Now this is really, really important because if you're in the middle of nowhere and you haven't got a clue and you've got no connected device, then this one here by pressing the crown will give you three satellites and this will tell you where you are located. It will also update your time and date. So this is really, really handy for those situations. Now, I'm in my light box, so I'm not gonna get a connection, but here is a little bit of a preview of what it looks like when it receives a signal. From time and position going down is the next one called Phone Finder. And as long as you're within range of your connected device, and the device just needs to be in standby, then this will work. So to operate this, it's just a press on the crown. And it will come up with phone finder and you'll have this noise and any button will turn this off. So I'm just gonna use the light button. There are some adjustment features that are available in G-Shock Connected. So basically you open up the app and you don't need to connect the watch at this point. And at the very top on the right side, there is this setting icon. So open this, then open up on the rangeman. And then fourth on the list, you have phone finder settings. You open this and you will have a couple of options. The first one is the sound list and there is three pre-installed ones. I'll just give you a little demonstration. And the second one. And the third one. And then pressing back takes you back out. And here you have a volume adjustment which you can control like this up and down. Just like to point out that there isn't a Find My Watch. Well, think about it. It's gonna be on your wrist. And the last one on this list is history. And this is basically showing you all the time adjustments using Bluetooth or the GPS. Next is the mode function. So by pressing button C, you will have menu one of two. And the first one is timekeeping mode. And basically all this does is just take you back by pressing the crown, just takes you back to the home mode there. So going back in after that one is the connect and this one is the same as a long press on button C. This is just gonna connect to your device, any button sort of to cancel that. The next one from connect is compass. Once you start the compass, you have about 60 seconds and then after that, it goes back to home time. Now you can press button D down the bottom here and this will refresh it for another 60 seconds. Now you have a bearing compass point here, arrow, that's always pointing to north. Then you have your bearing up the top there and then you have the degrees and then you always have your time. Pressing button A will take you to the settings menu and there's three to choose from. The first one is a bearing memory. So select this using the crown and then you press the crown again where, where it's selected on set. And then what you do, you just point the watch to the direction you need to follow. And it also gives you a little diagram. So by pressing button D, it will set this point. So if I aim straight ahead and then push button D, I will now have my main arrow pointing to north and then I'll have this smaller arrow pointing to my bearing location like so. Then pressing button A again, I go back into the bearing memory and then scrolling down, I can select release, then press the crown 
and then this takes that little compass away. Now there is a shortcut by pressing button A with a long press. You go straight here and from here you can push the button and set it. And then if you want to cancel that, then it's a long press on button A and then it has removed it. So there's a nice shortcut. Going back into the settings, pressing button A, I'm going to show you how to calibrate this. Now I would calibrate this in a open area, not in your home or in your car. Very important. Now, this is a one of three calibration and it gives you some animation telling you what button to press. And this is just indicating to face it in any direction and it needs to be level. So once you are happy, you press button D down here and then it goes of two of three and it's telling me to turn the watch 180 degrees and then push button D when ready. And then the last calibration is telling me to turn the watch upside down and then press button D again. And then it has a little chirp, comes up with successful and we're ready to go. If you don't do this successfully, then it will come up with a little warning triangle where the time is shown. You can also calibrate it using a compass. Now, this is the side that I would probably use the most because these compasses here, these oil field compasses, especially when a good quality one like this one, then this is gonna be a lot more accurate than actually just using sort of like the electronic side, but this is all down to what works best for you. So I'm going to show you how to do this. So back into the settings for the last time. And then at the bottom, it has magnetic. Open this. And here you have an offset. So you can either go east or you can go west to really fine tune it. And at any time, you can just press button D and this will reset it. And once you're happy, just press the crown and then that is completed. Next from compass is the altimeter. So pressing the crown opens up the display like this. And at the moment it's given me a reading of 125 meters. And this is using the air pressure sensor on this one here. I have the graph selected. Now there is an option to change this over and I will show you this. And this graph is measuring or showing 200 meters at the time. And then at the bottom here, you have the difference. Now you can press button D the once, and that will reset it and start the graph off again. Now by pressing button A up the top here, you have some settings. And the first one here is a difference reset. So if I was to press the crown now and going back, this will reset this point here back to zero. But there's also a quick option. So if you press button A with a long press, it will reset that to zero. So that's a nice quick handy tip. So let's go back into the settings. And if I was to press the crown, it would just do basically the same with the long press on button A. But I just thought I'll cover it anyway, so you get to see what it looks like. The next one is calibration. Pressing the crown, we're into this. Now you have a manual set or you have the offset. An offset is factory settings, but if you need to manually adjust it, this is where you do it. And here you can adjust using the crown and then using button D, will shift and you can go all the way through and you can also put it into a negative as well if you need so. And then once you're happy and you've got that set, then you just press the crown and then it says setting complete. From calibration, the next one is interval. So by selecting that with the crown, you have two options, two minutes or five seconds. So by selecting two minutes, you'll have a reading every second for the next three minutes, then every two minutes for the next 12 hours. And by selecting five seconds, you'll have a reading every second for the next three minutes, then every five seconds for an hour. Now I hope you understand that. So basically this is only really going to work 
if you keep the altimeter running. So if I went for the two minutes and if I went back here and then I press button D to reset, then for the first three minutes it will take the reading for every sort of second. And then after this will run for 12 hours as it is. But as soon as I come out, then you're gonna lose all that data which is shown on the display. Going back into settings, I'm now gonna show you the screen. So choosing the screen with the crown. Now I have this set on the graph and by selecting value, you'll have this display. So setting that, if I just come back with a back button, I now have the difference set at the top and the altitude right in the middle. So if you need a bigger display, then there it is. And if you're not bothered about the graph, then maybe this one is better. And to readjust that, again, you have to go back into the screen. There is no shortcut. And uh, I actually like the animation. I actually like the graph shown like that. I do like how you can see, and if you are climbing, and especially if you've got this set over the 12 hour period, you can really see the detail and the contour of what you're climbing or what you're descending. So going back again, the last time into the setting, you have unit, and this you can change between meters and feet. Now, being that this uses the sensor, the air pressure, to calculate the altimeter. This is going to be affected by the weather. So the higher up you go, and especially for those who climb around the mountains, you are very aware that when the weather comes in, it comes in quick, and then the pressure gets all messed up and then get a false reading, basically. So with the rangeman, you can actually use the GPS. So when you have the altimeter open, what you need to do is go into the navigation side. Now I'm just gonna briefly touch this because I will go into it more detail, but I need to cover this because this is really important. So with a long press on the crown for a few seconds, it starts the GPS and then you'll have, please wait. Then you'll have a log number and I will cover this. So don't take this in too much at the moment. But once you have a GPS signal at the bottom, you'll have a little icon showing you that you're connected. And once that's connected, all you have to do is press the mode button, the back button, button C and go back. And then you'll have your graph shown. Then you just wait a few moments and it can take up to one minute. And then the GPS will give you a more accurate altimeter reading and then by pressing button A with a long press you can reset the difference to zero and then you're ready to go and just leaving the GPS running in navigation will continuously update the altimeter so if you want the more accurate side then that is what I would recommend. If you do change the calibration if you go into the manual side you won't be able to update using the navigation of the GPS for at least one hour. And you're probably thinking, why is that? Well, if you're taking a manual reading, then you don't want the GPS to suddenly correct it and make a huge difference. Whereas over an hour, then you can sort of compensate for this. From altimeter going down is barometer, using the crown to select this, and you have this screen here. Now that is the air pressure at the top and I have this in hectare pascals and here is a graph and this is measuring 48 hours and every little dot is two hours. And then at the bottom here you have the temperature. Now this is taking the temperature from the back of the watch and I would actually take this watch off and rest it for at least a half an hour if you want a more accurate reading. Otherwise, it's just gonna take your body temperature. Pressing button D will refresh this. And if you press button A, you have some setting options. The first one is borrow information. By selecting this with the crown, you can either disable this or enable this. Now, if I go back, there is a shortcut with a long press on button A. Just a few little beeps. 
and there at the bottom it's shown borrow and this is going to be shown when you are also in the home screen so basically what this is going to be doing is going to be taking a measurement every two minutes over a 24 hour period and if there is a sudden increase in air pressure or a decrease in air pressure you will have an icon coming up indicating this and also you'll have a little icon at the bottom as well revealing what is happening so this is very very cool especially if you want to know about the sudden changes in the air pressure and to turn this off you can either go into the settings you can select the crown and turn this off or you can press button a with a long press and this will turn the burrow off and as you can see that's turned it off at the bottom. Going back into settings, pressing button A, I'm gonna show you the calibration side, selecting that with the crown. Now you have two options, barometer or thermometer. Let's start off with the barometer, and here you can do a manual set, or you can set it for the offset, which is factory reset. And by selecting that, you can see that it's pretty much the same as what you would do in the altimeter side if you needed to adjust it. And once you're happy, you just press the crown and setting is complete. Now, if I go back into the calibration and show you what the thermometer looks like, it is basically the same. Pressing manual and there you have like so. Pressing the crown, again, it is setting complete. Next is the screen, going down, opening that. And at the moment I have that on graph or you can select value pressing the crown and then it is setting complete. Let's come back out and give you a little preview. And here at the top, you have the temperature and then in bold, you have the air pressure. And the last setting is unit. Selecting this, you can adjust the barometer and the thermometer. Let's start off with the barometer. And here you can select hectopascal or you can choose inches of mercury. And if you go back to the thermometer, here you can change to Celsius and to Fahrenheit. From barometer going on to the next one, it's sunrise and sunset. And this is on page two of two now. So pressing the crown, this opens up the sunrise and sunset. At the very top here, you have the year with the date. And with these clear pictures, it's showing you that is the sunrise and that's the sunset. And by pressing button D, you can skip to the next day or the following day and so on. But with a long press on button D, you can actually go to a particular date and you can even change the year like so. Then pressing button D is your shift. And here I can adjust the month and then moving on, this is your actual date. And then once you have that set, you just press the crown and it's skipped to that time in forward. So now look how early the sunrise is and look how late the sunset is. And here you can continue and skip to the next days. And look, it's already gone on to July already, July the 1st. Then if you come out of this with the back button pressing D, and then go back in using the crown. Notice that the date is now from today, it's been reset. After sunrise and sunset is tide and moon. And now if this is a new watch or it hasn't been set up, when you open this, you will have a little prompt to say set in app. So basically what you need to do is connect the watch to the app. From this screen, you go to the top right corner and tap on the settings icon. Then you select the rangeman and then a little way down on the list, you're looking for set the location of the tide graph display and open this. A map will open. Now, if you're not sure of your location, then tap on the bottom right corner where this crosshair is and this will put you where your location is. Now from here, what you need to do is scroll out, keep scrolling, and then you will see all these tiny little dots. No, it's not measles, but these are the port locations for tides. So the nearest one to me, where my location is here, is here in London. Now if I tap on this one, this will be London Bridge. And here you can set this to your watch. So by tapping that bar there, 
this will now transfer that data to the watch. You can also save six locations for when you need them in the future. So when you open up the app using the crown, it will have your saved location. Now this is London Bridge and this will scroll at the top. You also have the age of the moon, plus you have a little icon of the moon. And here in the center is your tide graph. You get the date, you get a time, and also you can skip to the next day. The graph is broken down into three segments. So the very first segment down here, this would be your neap tide, then the middle one would be your half tide, and then the very top one would be the spring tide. And this is all related to the age of the moon. So at the moment, because it's a new moon, it is now on the spring tide, which is the highest tide. And then when it's on, say, a half moon, then it will be on a neap tide. On the right side, you have these two arrows. And this is basically for you to use the crown to scroll up and down. And this will advance the tide from one hour. And you can see that more I advance, you can see how the tide is progressing from a low tide up to a high tide. Then you can also just press button D and skip to the next day. But you can also just with a long press on button D, you can go to the date option and then choose a date that you have in mind to see what the high tide is. Then pressing back returns you. The information shown is just for guidance only. Now, if you want it more accurate, then it's pressing button A to go into the settings. Now you have a couple of settings. You have the high tide and the hemisphere. So let's start off with the high tide. By selecting this, you can enter the high tide time. Now, if you look on the internet or in your local newspaper, you'll find this time. Now you'll have two high tides and it doesn't matter which one you select. So once you've entered that by pressing the crown, you have now set that as completed. Now you have a more accurate high tide. Just to add that when you're manually setting the high tide, this just works for the current day. Now scrolling down to the hemisphere, this is with relation to what you see with the moon. Now being in London, I'm on the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere, that would be for an example if you were in Australia. From tide and moon, there is the stopwatch, pressing the crown to select this. Now you get the hours, you get the minutes and you get the seconds. There is no one hundredth of a second. Now come on, this is a survival watch. Very easy to use this using button D. This just simply starts and stops and then using button A to reset. Now there is a split function, so let's start the stopwatch. Then pressing A while it's running will give you split and it would actually come up with split there and with the icon in the middle flashing. So you can stop this, the icon stops flashing. Then by pressing button A, that would be your first split time. That would be your second split time. And then pressing for the second time, it will reset. And just to add that this is a thousand hour stopwatch. From stopwatch going down is the timer. Now this timer will measure up to 24 hours. So you have the hours, you have the minutes, and the seconds are counted here, but you can only adjust the hours and the minutes. And it's just a simple start stop using the button D again. And if you left it from the zero zeros, then it starts straight away from the 24s. So if you press the button D, this will stop it. Button A will reset it. Now by pressing button A when it's stopped, you have the setting here. So you have timer and time. So pressing the crown, you now get the option to use the crown to adjust this like so. And then using button D to shift. So you only have the hours and the minutes. Once you have it complete and once you're happy, you just press the crown and it's ready to go. Then you have to come back out of this. So by pressing start, there is the counter. There is no one hundredth of a second just to add. So I'm going to run this and show you what it looks like in home time. So a long press on button C there takes me to home time. So let's play this out. And when the timer sounds, you have a little window that says timer time up. 
and this will sound for 10 seconds and uh, then it goes off. I think that's a very cool feature. Going back into timer, now there is a shortcut to adjust this. It's just a long press on button A just for a few seconds and then it takes you straight back in here. So just thought I'd point that out. You can also adjust the timer in the app. So once connected, you go to utility and where the alarms are, the timer is there at the bottom. So if I select this, you can see that the timer is set on one minute and it's the same adjustment like you would do on your sort of alarm side and you can adjust the minutes. And once you start fiddling around and amending things, then you'll have send to watch at the bottom. So it's just a matter of pressing that. This will send the new update to your watch and then you can just start the timer to when you need it. And the last mode is world time, selecting this using the crown. And here I have this on Paris, and that's the Paris time. You also get the difference from the UTC. This is plus one hour ahead. And this time here is my London time. And also you get the date with the day of the week. Now by pressing button A, you go into the settings. Now you can either change the world time and you can adjust the daylight saving times and you can do this to all of the city codes. So let's just open this one up to show you what's in here. You have 39 cities to choose from, plus you have UTC. So that is a possibility of 40. And just looking at the time down here, every time I scroll, the time will be adjusted like so, and you can go backwards. So you can go west and east. So let's go west and uh, select a city. And here I'm gonna select Kathmandu, pressing the crown, and the setting is completed. Then pressing back, and there is the new world time I have selected. Kathmandu is up there, that is the time. And look at the plus on the UTC, five hours and 45 minutes. And it's even changed the date because it's the next day. And there it is now on Wednesday. And I have my home time still ticking away there. So if I go into the settings, scroll down to daylight saving, and there is the daylight saving options. Next time the Range Moon connects to the app, it will update the world time. So let's have a look in the app and show you how that works. So with the Range Moon connected and the app open, you need to select world time. And here on the watch, you can see it has been updated to Kathmandu. If I tap up here, I now can have a look at a map. I also have the option to select six of my favorites. So if I tap on the map, I can scroll around the map and pinch to zoom. And where it's red, that is the time zone. I also have the option, I can tap on the toolbar there and type in a country. So if I say I went for Canada, and then press search. These are all the cities that are available. And then I can just pick one, say I wanted Edmonton, and there it takes me straight there. And it also shows you the daylight saving options. So I can open this and turn this on auto on or off. And pressing the button down here will update the rangeman and that just takes a few seconds. It's going from Kathmandu, this is quite nice animation, and then it's gonna go all the way over to Canada, like so, bang. And now the world time is set. Then it comes back into this screen, and you can see now that is on Edmonton. There are more options available in the app, and if you connect the rangeman to the app and then open up the settings at the top there, then select the rangeman. Here you have two categories, app and watch. Now, just on the app side, there's one called app display settings. Now, if I tap on that, you have two options. Now, the first one I wanna show you is the elevation, and I have mine set on the watch data. Now, the reason why is because when I run the navigation, the altitude is adjusted through the GPS. Otherwise, it's using the sensor on the watch. And um, we've already discussed this, that if the weather turns, then things are starting to look a bit different. Then under elevation is display latitude and longitude.
latitude. I have mine on the decimal system because this is what the Google shows you on their maps. And then going back and going down, you can see that the watch has a few settings. So you could set the operation sound. You can even set the light settings. Next is the navigation. The GPS on the Range Moon will take a time update. It will take a time and position. It will adjust the altimeter. It will take a point memo using the navigation with a planned route and it also does an open navigation which is basically a track me so to open the navigation on the watch or the navigation menu it's just a press of the crown in home screen and then you'll have four categories here now navigation is broken into two parts this can be used either for a planned navigation which you use on the app which i will show you or an open navigation from navigation is point memo now point memo can be taken right now you don't need to open the navigation but just to let you know if you do a point memo this way will take the altitude reading from this sensor now if you're running the navigation already then using this it's also a lot quicker and it will take the GPS reading for the altimeter from point memo going down is the recall so open this now you have two here point and activity and the point is all to do with the point memo so I have actually taken a few so let's open this up so give you an example just takes a few moments for it to load up and then you'll have a list here and the point memos as I said you can store up to 60 so it's showing you the date and the time it was taken you can press the crown on this one here first of all I'd just like to add that you can change this symbol which I will show you in a live demo then you have your date and time then it gives you your latitude longitude your altimeter and it gives you the air pressure and also gives you your temperature. You also have a little padlock down here, so you could actually lock this in place by pressing button D, just waiting a few seconds, and then that is locked. And then when I come back out, you'll see there will be a little padlock next to this, but at the bottom here, D, you can actually unlock it here also. So you just nice to have those two places and like so and then if you had a longer list you can scroll up and down like so now if you wanted to delete one that is quite easy you just press button a and you have this selection either delete one or delete all so if i'm just going to delete one then it's just a matter of pressing the crown and then you wait and it's delete is completed and then i just have one and then press the back button to exit Next is the activity, and this is all to do with the GPS of the navigation side, so whether you run it with a route setting or just an open navigation. And if I open this at the moment, I don't have any activity, but I will do in a moment and uh, show you what that looks like. And then press back to exit, and then back to this menu. So from recall, I'm gonna go into the setting, and here I have goal, interval, and unit. So if I select goal, I have point recall or reset. And basically what this does, if I pressed point recall, this is gonna use one of my point memos. So I could actually use one of those to navigate to. I've only got one on the list as an example. And if I wanted to choose this one, then it's just pressing the crown. So let's just go back. And I like to also point, if you've got a root from your app that's in the watch, when you next press the crown, it will navigate you using the root. And this will always be the case. But if you wanted to do an open navigation and or a track me, then here you need to reset this. So I would recommend resetting this before you do anything with regards to an open route. 
From goal going down is the interval. And here you can choose either normal or high rate. Now, if you run it in normal, this will run the GPS up to 24 hours and then it will turn off. But it doesn't mean that it's the end of the GPS because I've managed to get over 48 hours. But if you need a more accurate reading, then I would choose the high rate. And this is more for when you're traveling with, say, a motor vehicle. Because it takes more information in, it means it only runs from four to five hours at a time so it's going to have to be restarted but if you want a more longer sort of plan or route activity then i would choose normal especially if you're just walking and from interval down to unit here you can change either kilometers or to miles I'm going to try and make this as easy as possible, but I'm not going to rush this. So uh, if you need to skip to certain parts, then you've got the timestamps down in the bottom of the description. From this window here, you have either a route setting. It also gives you some information here of how to start the GPS on the navigation, which is a long press of two seconds. Then it tells you what your GPS mode is. This one I have set in normal. This will be all your routes. This will be your open navigation and also your point memos are stored here. Log import is once you've completed an activity, then you can transfer the data from the watch to the connected device and I will show you this later. So let's create a new route. So you press root setting and then you'll have a window like this and then you use the big red button down here with the plus icon, you tap on that. Now we have three options. I'm going to show you how to use the new one just to uh, let you know that the activity one here is using the data you have that was transferred from your arrangement to the app. So if you had a point memo you would like to start from, then that's the one to choose. There is also GPX data that can be transferred. Now, I don't use this, and I'm sure there's plenty of other videos out there, but I'm sure this is easy. There is apps that have this GPX data. It is saved to your device, and I think this works better on Android. And then when you open this, it will find, it will search any data you have in your device and transfer it from there. Anyway, I want to concentrate on a new route. So tap on this. And it opens a window like this. At the top, you have register start. And then you have two options here. You have keyword search or a point search. Now, if I tapped on the point search, I can use one of the point memos I have saved as my starting point, or I could use it as my end point. So pressing the cross to go back. It's also showing a map, and it always starts off in your location. Now, this only works if you have a connection. If you have no connection, this isn't going to work as the maps aren't stored on the actual app. So you want to have a starting point. So just to give you an example how the keyword search. So tap on this, then it'll bring up a keyboard. Say I wanted to have Zurich. Then you'll have a little list here of all the different places that have Zurich. And I know this is the one that's in Switzerland. So if I tap on that, and I have the map here, and you can pinch to scroll as well. So let's just zoom out to make sure that is Zurich in Switzerland. And we're going out, and yes, it is. I can just continue and pick a place from there, but I'm gonna show you something else that's really, really, really cool. Now, I can put a coordinate in. Now, I have one here already uh, written down, so just bear with me, so that's five, one. Then with a point, 508, then I want 226, then I use a dash, and then the next coordinate is 0 0.087821. Now you'll get a list of three, and the one you want to select is the one with the Y. This is very, very important. For some reason, these two here always take you to the middle of the ocean. So if I tap this, this should be London Bridge. And there it is. So that is really, really good to know. If you wanna go back to your location or where you are and you don't know where, you know, how to find it, 
I just found that the best thing to do is just hit the X up the top there and then just go back. And then when you press the button again, you go into new, it will always take you to where your location is. So let me plan a little route. So I'm gonna zoom in and I know a really good starting point. There's a nice little pond here. So if I start there, if I've made a mistake, I can touch somewhere else. You can put basically anywhere you like. So as soon as you've got start and you're happy with that, then you press next. And then next is to register a goal. Well, basically, I'm just gonna go in a complete round circle and I shall put the goal right there. And again, you can put the goal anywhere you like, like you can do with the start. So I do like that. And when you're happy and you're ready, you press next. And notice that the icons at the top here are moving. So we're now on three and this is create a route. So if I zoom in and this doesn't have to be exact, but you just put it there just to give you a rough idea. Maybe you want to take a screenshot and pass it to someone. So I'm going to go to this point here. I'm going to go down here and then I'm going to go all the way over to here. So I can just go from there to there, point there. Now, if you've made a mistake, you do have the return to previous route. So if you press that, it starts deleting them like so. So just sort of add that before I forget. And then there's a little junction up here and um, there's one here. You don't need to take it all the way to the goal. As soon as you press next, it will complete it for you, like so. Now, I have waypoints. Now, waypoints are limited, you only have nine. So, in this sort of situation here, I'm gonna create my first waypoint here because this is a turning point. I'm also gonna put one here as well, but you could use it differently. You could have it say, if there's a particular like little scene you wanna stop and have a rest, or if there's water, or it's up to you anyway. Um, from here, drawing two, I'm gonna put it straight to three there. And then up here will be my fourth one, and then it's goal. So let me sort of explain how the arrangement is going to work. Now, let me explain what I can do. I can either walk straight to start and go from there, but if I'm say up here somewhere and I wanna to get to start, I can already start the navigation from here. All it's gonna do, or what the arrangement's gonna tell me to do, will draw a straight line to start. It won't take me around the buildings and around the streets, but it will give me an idea of how far my start is. So if you wanted to do it that way, then it works. So what happens, you start the GPS on the navigation on the watch, and on the watch, I will show you this because I will be doing a live videoing of this. You start from start, and then on the watch, you can select the points. So when I select point one, it's gonna tell me the distance. So for an example, say that's two kilometers from there, and then from the point two, it will say maybe it is three kilometers and it will calculate it like this. All it's doing is a straight line. It won't be doing this little kink here. So from point two to three will just be a bearing compass straight line. If I wanted it more accurate, then I need to put another waypoint in the middle. Just to give you an idea, don't forget, this is a survival watch. So once I get to point one, and just to give you sort of an idea, if I walk past point one, the arrow on the rangeman will tell me to head back. So once I get to point one, then I select waypoint two, and then hopefully the arrow would direct me there. And once I get to two, then so on, it takes me to three, to four, and then from four, I can select goal and walk from there. And at any point on the route, I can point to goal 
and have a look at that. I can also look at start as well and I shall show you this while I'm outside. Also along the route I can take point memos and I can take as many as I like all the way around. You can also use your device to take pictures and the pictures are uploaded to your activity so when you transfer this to the app you'll have all the pictures shown. As I'm using an iPad and I'm not going to be carrying this I thought I'd just mention that now. There is a backtrack feature and when you select the backtrack, say you're at goal, basically what backtrack does is reverse this all in order. So your goal will become your start and where start is, that would be your new goal. If you're just walking from one line to another, gut start and a goal, and you've done all the streets like so, when you do backtrack, all it's gonna do is point from start to go it won't take you through this but i will set this up and show you what it looks like on the watch once we're out there and once you're happy how you have that set up you just press completion and then it comes up are you sure because you can't edit it anymore and once you're perfectly sure you set that then i need to tap up here and give it a name i'm gonna call it a whoop 69 and then press done now it's ready to go and you also have some 3d mapping i'm going to grab my rangeman now and get into the connection side so that's just going to connect to the app and then i have connection completed then i go back here and you think oh i've lost all my data well you haven't so if you go to root setting there is my root and from here I can add another route just for an example say I did start from there and that is my goal next I can draw a route just very quickly like so put a couple of waypoints in like that and then completion are you okay yes and then I'm going to call that whoop 69 uh, 2 just for an example, and then press done. Now I have the possibility to transfer that to the watch, but I'm gonna choose to close it. This is the one I want to transfer to the watch, the original one. It's showing red because the watch is connected and then you just transfer that and this will give me a prompt that if I have already saved route, this will overwrite it. So I press transfer. For this type of map, this isn't gonna take long. And then you have a loading bar in the middle here. And then when that's full, you know it's transferred. And now the bar is full, it's come up with done. And now it's telling me when I want the navigation to start, just to hold down the navigation button for two seconds. So I say thanks for that. Now you have some options. You can download the map offline. So when you're out in the field and you have no connection, at least you have something to look at. And because you've drawn your route, you can now sort of follow it. It also has a little icon to tell you that this route is downloaded on the rangeman. So let's just download that. Are you sure you want to download the map? Yes, offline. And uh, this does take round about sort of about 30 seconds to download. Well, it's all down to your internet speed, I guess. And once it's downloaded, it'll come up with offline map. You'll see here, this is the one I've got to the watch. And there you can see you have the little watch icon and then you can either clear the route and it resets it in the watch or if you wanted to, you can select this one, but you can only have one map that's downloaded at a time. I am now at the pond and I'm gonna start the navigation. Now there is two ways of doing this. I can press the crown once and you can have the navigation menu and then I press the crown again and then it starts the navigation or just a long press on the crown for two seconds and then it opens up this menu with please wait. Then I'm going to have a log number of one and this can take up to 20 logs. Once you have a connection, you will get the little GPS icon down here next to the date. You'll also have a timer and this map is on 40 kilometers that's zoomed out and there's my little flashing icon from start and at the top you can see that it says maximum where the battery is this is the memory so the more you use it then the more it fills up by pressing button a i can scroll through the different sort of uh, modes and the first one this is my goal 
because I'm still at start and then the first waypoint is 0 0.2 kilometers then pressing again will give me my second waypoint my third waypoint my fourth waypoint and then it comes back to the memory by pressing the crown I get two little arrows here either side so now I can use the scroll wheel and go in so that is a zoom of four kilometers then there is two kilometers and you can see the icons getting slightly bigger and then the last one this is the bearing compass this is what I need to navigate me so if I go through button A from goal to the first waypoint you can see that the arrow has changed now if I press again to waypoint number two you can see the arrow turning around there's waypoint three and then four is back there and then back to goal so what I need to do is select waypoint number one and head for that direction so when I turn now I'm facing the direction then the bearing compass adjusts and then I can continue and you can see at the top give me the distance to the first waypoint right I'm just walking past the waypoint because I know the path and I just want to see how it performs so I'm going to be walking past it about sort of 20 meters about now and there you can see that the bearing compass is now turned around so when I turn around that starts pointing backwards so I know I need to go in this direction I've now reached waypoint one and if I press button A this will take me to the waypoint two and hopefully and it does it's pointing me down this path here which is absolutely perfect so let's continue That's my starting point, 0 0.2 kilometers away. Then I have waypoint one. I'm currently at waypoint two. And if I press a third time, now that should take me in a straight line here, which is absolutely perfect. So I have 0 0.3 kilometers before I hit waypoint three. I'm now going to show you how to do a point memo. So from this navigation screen, actually it doesn't matter which one you are actually in. It's just a long press on the crown. And then please wait comes up. Then taking a point memo. And that took about 20 seconds. Now I can set an icon. So let me press the crown and here I can use the scroll wheel and I can go through all the different icons here now there's page six of six so which one should I choose well I'm just going to go through them very quickly so you get to see them all and then page one of one so how about a bit of fire to set that just press the crown in please wait setting is completed and then I can continue and I'll say you can take 60 of those if you need I just want to point out that this map isn't the greatest especially if you're doing a short distance like what I'm doing but over a longer distance this actually works quite well now if I turn around and face backwards you'll see the bearing compass turn around like so and that's how quick it is it's not too bad I guess now I've reached memo point number three so by pressing button a moving on to point four you can see that it's navigating me up here now 0 0.1 kilometer so I'm now at way point number four and if I press button a I need to go back to goal which is in this direction here there it is absolutely perfect 0 0.1 kilometer so I'm now at the pond and there look it's actually turning around and I am at the pond look at that 
it's perfect hey once you've reached your goal it doesn't actually give you any clue that you've actually landed it's just basically down to your common sense i guess so pressing button d from this position here i have some options i can quit i can reset goal very important if you want to do an open navigation or you can do backtrack so let's select backtrack with the crown and here you have a little safety screen so if you don't do anything it will t uh, continue otherwise you have the choice to actually cancel so let's just run it please wait now what it's going to do is reverse everything backwards so my running time is coming up to 40 minutes now i'm going to stop this so pressing button d i'm now going to quit like so and then you have this little screen as well so i'm just going to press OK and then it comes out like so. I'm now going to go into the navigation and go down to recall, select that and then I'm going to go down to activity and here I'm going to lock it in. So now that is selected and then by pressing button D it will now have the padlock. Now I can't accidentally remove that and I also could do that to the points. Now I just need to connect the rangeman to the app. Once connected, I'm going to select log import and then it comes up with this little window. Do you want to retrieve the data? This could take some time, so I've got to do it anyway. And uh, for something like this, this should be quite quick. There's the loading bar and it is now done. Now I can select all activity. Here is my route. So tap on that and there it is. So let's uh, have a look at some of the information on this screen. At the top here you have a little option. Here you can either have it in graphic or you can select a satellite view and just tap that to go back. Here it's showing the total distance of 1.3 kilometers and the total time was 38 minutes. And here you can see there's an altimeter graph and here there is a spike. Now what I should have done is gone into the altimeter while the navigation is running and calibrated that against the GPS and then you wouldn't have this spike. Anyway, just to show you that it does recalibrate automatically. And along the route, you can see that's where I took the point memo and there is the goal. Now scrolling down, here is the title and it's in a coordinate format, but you can tap on there and change it to whatever you choose. Now here is a bit more of the route showing you the time with the highest altitude reading. It gives you coordinates. Now I've noticed that it does it in decimal point for some reason. And there is air pressure as well. This is when I took the point memo and it's registered that as a coordinate. And then scrolling down, we have the last little section here. That's the time I started, that's the time I finished, duration, and you've got the activity distance, and you've got the altitude difference of 14.9 meters. Now scrolling back to the top, I can tap on this icon here and expand it like so. So I can now pinch to zoom and really get into the details. Now, remember this is on normal settings, so it's only taking a measurement every couple of minutes whereas if you have it on high rate then it will be a lot more accurate but I just wanted to show you the absolute worst so you can appreciate the higher rate and that's when I overshot that little turn in there and uh, just to show you how the bearing compass works and I did another one there and then there was quite a few trees along the bottom here and then I came out onto the road then turned here and then ended up at goal and no I did not go for a splash in the pond and then just press cancel 
to bring you back to this page. You also can play back in 3D. So let's try this out. Now going back into all activity here, I can go to point up here and this is where all the point memos are stored. And if you remember the one with the fire, if I tap on this one, you have some information here. So the title is the coordinate, it's got the date, I've also got the time and it's also showing me the decimal point. I could also take a little memo as well. And you have the option to actually make the map bigger as well. So you can really pinch to zoom to see that location and then just press cancel to return. And then selecting the arrow to go back, you do have the option to delete. So if you just tap on delete, it comes up with these little squares, so you can just tap on those and select which ones you want to remove. Now, there is only six shown on a page and then you have one of two down the bottom because I've been busy. Then just press cancel to return. Whatever you delete on the app doesn't delete it off the watch. These are both acting separately. Just wanna show you one thing before we end this video. Going back into the point memo, opening that up, right, selecting this one here. This is the one with the fire, remember? Now, if I press the crown, I can change the actual icon. So I thought that would be sort of something that is quite useful. So you can just have a quick look at all the different pictures there in my light box because I think I rushed through it a bit too fast last time. So if I just choose a random one, say I choose that one, which is this one here, and then just press the crown, it will now have that saved. And there it comes up with the icon now changed. There is also the padlock there, so I can just lock it away here. And once that is locked, then it has that little padlock up here just to show you. So when I come back, it is also shown in the list. That is the full tutorial completed, and I hope it's all useful. And if you have any further questions, you can just chuck me a comment because I know this thing inside out. Anyway, that is the time, the GPS time. And as always, thanks for watching.